Welcome to another episode of Devs on Tape. Our guest software development Odyssey began in 1995 focusing on Oracle applications. With a strong foundation in Oracle 6 and Forms 2.3, yes, the one with macros instead of PLSQL, and RPT as a reporting tool, he embarked on a fascinating career. In 2009, he took a leap into self-employment, embracing the freedom to forge his own path. Throughout the years, he has closely followed the evolution of Oracle tools, witnessing their advancements and exploring the endless possibilities they offer. His passion for his profession is unmatched, as he consistently strives for the best possible results and demonstrates a genuine eagerness to learn and grow at many conferences. Today on Devs on Tape, we have the privilege of delving into Eric von Roon's journey as an Oracle specialist. Join as we uncover his insights, unravel the challenges he faced, and uncover the secrets of his success. Get ready to be inspired, informed, and captivated by the stories and wisdom of Eric van Roon. So grab a cup of beer, I think, sit back, and get ready to listen to the fascinating world of software development unfold on Devs on Tape with your hosts and our guest, Eric van Roon. Let's get started. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Hi. Sounds like an interesting person. I'd like to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might meet him. So today you're not meeting just uh, me. Unfortunately, Caro will not be here in Denver where we speak to today. But as uh, instead, we have Philip Hartenfeller on this podcast and Moritz Klein. Hello, Philip, and hello, Moritz. Hi. Hello, which so, means you need two people to replace Carl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you can say that. But you have to share one microphone. So I, I hope that's working out fine. All right. So let's talk about Eric. So your fascinating career at Oracle with Oracle applications and stuff. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about you besides what I uh, had in this mm -hmm. introduction. Well, first of all, I'd like to mm, uh, make a small correction. Mm -hmm. uh, Oracle applications are usually referred to uh, what used to be called Oracle applications. That's uh, what, what they're called nowadays. Oracle Fusion apps. Stuff? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So, and apart from a very short period uh, early in my career, I didn't work with that. Mm -hmm. I worked with applications built on Oracle technology. I mean, it's it's how you interpret this. So be not so mean and correct my no, introduction. No, 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 no. It's just that in the early days, Oracle applications was a very specific thing. And okay. That's not what I used to work with. But it, I mean, it was in the introduction, um, in, in the introduction too, that it was in 1994, uh, 1995, and it's so long ago, and I, I wasn't even able to speak at that point, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe I cannot remember what Oracle applications were or what, what, I, what, what they are now. But uh, you started with that, okay? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's, uh, in, yeah, in 1995, uh, I did. I, I then was usually oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> At that point, I was working as a as an, uh, an analyst in labo in laboratories, uh, microbiology, biochemistry, things like that. And then in '95, I had a retraining to become an Oracle developer. And yeah, I did that. Liked it a lot. And uh, yeah, after the retraining, I thought, yeah, I've got one foot in IT. I really, really need to get that other food in there as well. So, yeah, started learning stuff related to Oracle and uh, working with it. And yeah. Mm -hmm. What sparked your interest in changing your career? Well, that was forced, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and I had this wonderful vacation with my then girlfriend, now wife. Uh, in Turkey, and we rented a car, tried to get into the country, and leave uh, leave Istanbul. And uh, at some point, to make a long story a bit shorter, we were driving through Istanbul. There was this uh, truck coming from the left with quite high velocity. He tried to steer away from us and, well, it just landed on top of our car, basically. So, wow. yeah, my back was uh, busted and I couldn't do my job anymore. Been at home for a couple, for some time. And then at some point I got the opportunity to get this retraining and I just, uh, yeah, jumped in. 
And I think it was the right decision, right? Because you're sitting right here and uh, preparing for the conference next week. And um, that's because exactly. you're a very famous speaker right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wouldn't call me famous, uh, maybe infamous. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. So, uh, yeah, you you started um, speaking at conferences at, at, at some point, right? When, when was your first conference you, to, you talked to the people? Uh, the first one where I talked was actually uh, K-Scope. And that was in 2014, I think. Oh, so late. I was guessing. Yeah. So I got the information from my little tweet bird that uh, you started to uh, get into the self-employment at 2009. So it That's took correct. you like many years to to uh, put everything you learned and, and get everything sorted to, to go on conference and speak there. Yeah, well, I went to conferences a lot before that, but mm -hmm. I never went there as a speaker or always as an attendee. Mm -hmm. And when was the turning point then? Uh, when uh, Patrick Burrell, another Dutch uh, guy, he was going to K-Scope, he was accepted, but at the last moment his uh, employer said he couldn't go. So then he asked me, would you like to do my talk? Oh, wow. <laughs> First and, talk and then a talk from someone thought, else. Mm. My God, uh, what am I going to do now? So I thought, yeah, well, you know, hmm, I've been thinking about it every now and then doing this kind of stuff. And you know what? Let's just do it. So you attended K-Scope before or was it also your first time K-Scope when you presented? No, I've attended K-Scope before. Okay, great. I was thinking that it was uh, like, would you like to fly to America to present your first presentation <laughs> From my prepared slides, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I must admit that that was a mistake. I, I took over his uh, presentation and he already said, well, you do with it what you want, make it your own presentation, mm -hmm. no, no problem. But I just took his presentation, I prepared it and I did it, but that was a mistake. I should not have done that. I should mm -hmm. have actually made it my own presentation. So so your presentation wasn't, was not good enough, you think? Well, no, it was good enough, okay. but good enough is not what I strive for. <laughs> but it was a great starting point, I think. So you knew for the next times that you would um, exactly, get everything. I learned new. right there and then that uh, I should not do other people's material. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe something you brought into this mashup program, right? So Patrick Barrett is also a team member, and I, th I think you were a team member there, right? Exactly. Uh, I was uh, involved in uh, getting it from the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and, but after a while, I had to cut back on some things I'm doing because oh. I have a problem with saying no to interesting stuff. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and there is a wife at home for yeah, some strange reason. She wants to see me every now and then, too. <laughs> so... <laughs> At some point, I really had to cut down on some stuff. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, the MESH program was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe one day I will get back there again because I think it's a really, really important thing. Mm -hmm. I, I think we, we talked about this topic um, a few episodes before with Samuel, but I think it was in German language. So maybe we can just talk uh, a little bit about the MESH, up pro, uh, mesh, up, <laughs> the mesh program. So uh, in my understanding, it is a program where experienced speakers are helping not, not experienced uh, speakers to get their first presentation or get better or something exactly it's uh, the main goal of the program is to get new speakers out there mm -hmm. because if you go to conferences you look around what do you see uh, uh, speakers well they're old like me <laughs> you know And thank you we are also <laughs> speaker at the conference <laughs> <laughs> well in general because there are actually young speakers uh, out there but they are the exception mm -hmm. Most of them are the old people and at some point we will all retire. We will all just leave this and mm -hmm. even apart from that, but you're only hearing our perspective. We need new people out there, people that start sharing their knowledge and their experiences. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's hard to get people to do that. And I get that because it's it's daunting it's uh yeah it's something that scares you to just be basically fragile stand in front of a crowd and just share what you think is your knowledge i mean what if they don't agree what if they are right to not to not agree yeah. you know it it is yeah it's daunting it's uh, it's scary mm -hmm. so yeah i think it's also important to 
support people to make that first step to guide them in their way to become an experienced speaker. Mm -hmm. So the MESH program is there to, if you want to become a speaker, help you uh, get there, help you uh, in thinking about what is a good title for my, uh, for my talk. Mm -hmm. well, how do I uh, write an abstract that has a chance to be, uh, be selected? What if I do get selected? What, what now, mm -hmm. you know? So we try to help you in every step of that way. And it's basically uh, intended for new speakers. But if you've already done a couple of uh, talks and think, yeah, well, I'm still struggling, still, I still could have, could need some help with this or that part of the process. Well, you're welcome. That's that's a really great thing. I, I was just looking up for the right uh, domain that our listeners can follow uh, the Mesh program. I think it's meshprogram.wordpress.com. I don't know if you have another um, URL going on, but that's the one. Yeah. So to our listeners, if you're interested to to get on this um, track and speak at conferences, you can still reach out to everyone. Besides Eric, no, you can reach yep. out to them. I, I think too, but not in this program. And well, you I, can reach out to me, and I will just, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, tell you where to go, where to look, and uh, yeah. could get you into contact with people that are currently running it. Great, but you can just go to the to the website as well, and you can get help there from from very experienced speakers. Uh, I think so. The core team is with Liron Amitzi, Mirella Ardeleon, oh god, <laughs> Neil Chandler, Kim Berg Hansen, Samuel Nietzsche, and uh, you as an alumni, right? And um, yeah, so go ahead and go to this program and um, meet exciting people and the Mesh Program Mentor and Speaker Hub. Yep. So you decided so to something yeah, something very important to uh, to, to to mention here. At least as a Dutch guy who is always thinking about money, of, of course, mm -hmm. uh, it's absolutely free. There is no strings attached, attached whatsoever. You can just sign up. You will get the help you want, mm -hmm. I hope. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, if you signed up and you think, oh, no, this was a mistake, well, just walk away. There are absolutely no strings attached. Yeah, and I think the worst thing that it can happen if you reach out for the MESH program to get help is just uh, a little bit time to wait because it's it's free and everyone has to yeah. make some some time free for for talking about um, this this uh, mentorship. Yeah, and that's that's another important thing. Don't think that the MESH program will do the work for you. Yeah, it's your presentation. Uh, you will have to do the work. Uh, they will help you. They will assist you, but you are going to have to do the work. Mm -hmm. So, That's what you said before. It's your presentation. You can do another one's presentation. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I mean, if it's even to um, to to um, get into this and, and get a first speech or presentation, and then you might think, okay, this was nice, but th this will not be my favorite topic and I will not do it again. But this first-time mm -hmm. experience, I think, is the right one. Yeah. Right, so you decided to... to um, not take a break but but cancel this and and um yeah focus more on 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 your private life right and why do you start to get in this uh this this uh, sim 42 program then instead <laughs> well that was before i decided that i should have to stop doing a couple of things <laughs> <laughs> and then you started one year right yeah uh well symposium 42 is something that came up uh during pandemic Around that time, uh, well, the, the, the ACE program was basically being run into the ground by some people that uh, did something that looked like a hostile takeover. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of concern uh, within the community about the ACE program. And at some point, uh, a couple of us, well, we just saw it going straight to its grave. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, We thought that was a pity. And uh, while talking about that, continuously, continuously, we kept talking about it. Uh, I have to say we have uh, this group of uh, speakers that have regular, uh, uh, well, drinks online on mm. Friday evening. Uh, so we speak, uh, speak a lot with each other. And uh, while we were there, we were talking about uh, this ACE program that was on his way to death. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
what we could do about that. And then Martin Whitlake, he came up with an idea he has, he's been having for a couple of years that there should be something similar to the ACE program, not the same, but similar, but from the community, not from the vendor. Mm -hmm. So completely uh, independent, uh, yeah, recognition program. Maybe a bit like uh, the oak table, mm -hmm. but not the oak table. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to say that uh, this group of people, the, the Symposium 42, that that is comparable to those awesome people in the in the in the oak table. Even though some of those people are in Symp Symposium 42 too. But yeah, it's a bit in between. You know, bit. Uh, a bit ACE program, a bit Symposium 42. There is this group of people that do good things for the community. Um, they try to speak, uh, organize uh, events, uh, well, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And for that work, they are recognized by inviting them to become a member of Symposium 42. Oh, great. Yeah, th that's the point. I was guessing what is Symposium 42. And then I saw some some people I know, and uh, I know they are like the elite of something because I know every one of them, and most of them are also aces and, and maybe s even ace directors, right? And um, I was guessing, what is this for a cult? <laughs> right. So, so what I what is a mystery about this symposium? Because yeah. I saw the stickers, I saw the tweets and banners yeah. and T-shirts and so so on. I didn't know even what it's about. So n now it's nice that you talked about that and, and told us. <laughs> well, it, it it really is a kind of sneaky, deliberate thing. We didn't do a big bang. Hey guys, we're here at Symposium yeah. 42. Yesterday we weren't here. Now we are here. Yeah. <laughs> we just started so and what's the story behind the robes and the mystery stuff you do at the graveyard together <laughs> sorry what <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> you will not talk about that stuff right <laughs> okay it's, it's, it's still a mystery we yeah. will come to that later <laughs> okay let, let, let's come back to the to the to the technical topics so you started with oracle 6 right so um what's the journey well, after that? Um, yeah. another correction sorry <laughs> come on it's on your own website <laughs> Yeah, well, Oracle 6 is the one that I uh, started working with, but the oldest version that I've worked with is Oracle 5. Okay. The, so the, 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 the second assignment that I got was an assignment on Oracle 5. I would send some feedback to the to the <laughs> webmaster of your own webpage, right? Yeah, so it's a good idea. This one. Good idea. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let me get that. All right. Well, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I started out with uh, the early versions. That's right. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite feature that was added to the database? Since since you started, since I started, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> if I uh, would it, would compare it to Oracle Five, then the favorite feature would be PL SQL. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. No? <laughs> yeah, you, you uh, wrote on the website that there were like macros. Tell me more about that. So it's so far away for me. I didn't even know what this is. Yeah. Well. That's basically the same problem with the database. Oracle 5 didn't even have PL SQL yet. And uh, uh, Forms 2.3 obviously didn't have PL SQL either. Yeah. Uh, so back then uh, you worked with what they call macros. And uh, yeah, you could only do SQL basically. So you have to do yeah some fancy stuff with uh, a query and go into another query if the query is successful or returns something or another path if it doesn't and yeah it's, it's basically that and how did you celebrate the introduction of psql then <laughs> it sounds, sounds like a very big hassle yeah well um as you said before i started out with oracle 6 and that had uh PL SQL, so i knew PL SQL. it was there before i started working okay. with the oracle database it's just that at some point, I had to do, take a step back and work with Oracle 5. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you had it, but you you were not able to use it in, in yeah, some certain yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. All right. So uh, there are many additions. So um, what do you think was the, the biggest release of Oracle databases in, in between now? Like 23.C, or not point C, 23C right now, the, the free developer edition. What was the biggest uh, leap in, in, the, in this versioning? 
hard question, I know, but... Yeah, it's a hard question. Uh, most of the releases had some stuff that you think, oh my God, why, why just now? Why not 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. I think looking back, Seven was an awesome release that introduced quite a bit of uh, features that we still use every day today. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I think Seven would be my choice. Great. So I don't even start at seven. So you guys, Moritz, I'm looking to no, you. No, 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 no. Oldest release was was an eight one seven that I used. I started with nine i. Seven was the one with trusted server when trusted server came along, right? No. T tell us more about that, Moritz. No, that's <laughs> it's because I'm working closely with an Oracle guy with with Richard yeah. Allen, and he's but has been with Oracle long ago. I think he introduced a. Uh, He was a PM for Trusted Server back then. Oh, sad. I, I thought you can talk about more uh, about this this old stuff because more, uh, uh, Philip and I loved history class, right? <laughs> so we, we like to hear about the ancient <laughs> times of development in the Oracle database. Yeah, okay. So w what is the main technology you're working with right now in the daily business? Um, well, SQL, PL, SQL, uh, and forms. I've, my current client... Uh, oh. My current client is uh, is a company that has a, a legacy system that is very important for them. Uh, Oracle 19, okay, so that's good. Uh, and forms and, and forms. Oh my god! And designer. Oh, <laughs> they even still use designer. Did you already hear about Apex? What's that? Okay. <laughs> it's um it's um okay l let's not talk about that it's so. that fancy new program in language that larry is promoting right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> the main thing of larry every day right <laughs> well i do know apex of course and i love apex absolutely love it mm -hmm. but i'm definitely not an apex developer i play with it at home i build some simple stuff for myself but that doesn't make you an apex developer Yeah, definitely. But I, I think uh, if we do a, a short rewind, so there was one time in your life where you have to cut off something and you decided for the mesh program and not for forms, right? So <laughs> you, you, it might be a possibility to cancel the, the customer who's using <laughs> forms, right? Or maybe mm -hmm. to consider uh, bringing Apex into this. So, Yeah, well, they're considering it for some parts uh, of, the, of the system. But <clears throat> on the other hand... Uh, They have invested in uh, moving to a uh, Java-based application uh, and they have been working on that for five years now and there's nothing there to show yet. So that quickly <laughs> turned into a scary movie right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, it was Scream and then it was yeah. a scary movie, right? <laughs> But if you have dedicated your resources for on that for five years, it's hard to say, well, you know, just let's just pull the plug and do some Apex. Sign and cost fallacy. Yeah, mm. exactly. I, I mean, uh, th this, this podcast is called Devs on Tape and we welcome everyone to this podcast and we will not be opinionated about something, no. but I have to cut it off right now because we uh, were introducing java right now and i <laughs> definitely we don't want to talk about this because it takes like, so long pun intended right? <laughs> <laughs> i totally agree <laughs> all right so you, you are um attending the case as a speaker and uh you might have the chance to watch some apex stuff and maybe you get into that more but let's let's talk about your sessions at case what are you talking about in this conference Oh, am I talking? Ooh, oh, better better, right? It's, it's one, <laughs> one week left, so you have to decide what you're talking about, right? I have a total of three sessions. Wow. Uh, one is the, about um, uh, exception handling, of, uh, error handling uh, during bulk, uh, bulk processing of data. So during for all uh, statements, basically. Uh, another one is about uh, the lessons learned during uh, data migration projects. And the third one, I have to think real hard. Um, I mean, it's your problem if you don't know about <laughs> no, Don't worry, by the time I st uh, step up to the stage, I, I will know. <laughs> yeah. Um, third one is... We can get back to that if, if it's, it's coming to your mind again, but... Um, Are all your talks about something you do in your projects or do you have like one experience from the project and um, something additional you do in your free time or something you just think is important to talk about at a conference? 
it's usually uh, the kind of stuff that I do in my daily work, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes the yeah, like the the the, the data migration uh, stuff. That's yeah, uh, stuff I learned during the years because I've done a lot of data migrations, mm-hmm. and I think yeah, there's some stuff that keeps coming back. Let's just uh, make a talk about that. Uh, but yeah, it's usually just stuff that I use every day, and I like to do uh, the, the the beginner stuff, uh, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And because when when I'm doing my my work, I notice that the developers around me are amazed by some of the possibilities, and I think it's been here for 15 years. How come you don't know about it? I mm-hmm. mean, that you don't use is use it is one thing, but you don't even know about it. And then I think, yeah, I have to uh, advocate this. I have to make people aware of the fact yeah. that it's there. So, yeah, that's uh, th- then there's an- another topic for a uh, for talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. H- how many abstracts did you did you submit to the to the conference committee? Just for the- for case code? Yeah. Uh four. Four and three accepted. That's a pretty good rate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and now you have a surprise podcast, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for for all our listeners, right? So uh, Eric Ham uh, came for the beer, right? So he Ubered here with his fourth driver because everyone else abandoned his his <laughs> request when he went from the hotel here. And yeah, I can imagine that they do that uh, if they see it's me. Then uh, yeah. Who would want to pick me up, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I will not say anything about that, but no comment, right? No. But uh, yeah, you, you went into our Airbnb and you were surprised that there were microphones on the table. And so we make sure that you're not prepared for this talk here. But um, yeah, so... Yeah, do, it was a huge right. surprise. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, I did ask them if they knew the word consent, but uh, apparently it's something new to them. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, because the mics are on and you signed this contract to us and we have beer on the table. That's the reason because... Uh, yeah, that's always, a, that's always a good way to get me to do stuff. Just give me beer. <laughs> <laughs> that's they, for our listeners, right? And there's also Smirnoff, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> there's a lot on the table right now. <laughs> Not only with the topics and the technical stuff, right? <laughs> All right, so uh, maybe we can dive into our categories today, um, as we do all the time uh, in our podcast. And I have some questions uh, to you about the hypothetically stuff, the in private stuff and the consumption stuff. So let's start with the hypothetically thing. So if you uh, if you could undo one technology, uh, technology, that's a question I marked red because it's very, very hard to read. <clears throat> hypothetically, if you could undo one te- technological trend in the past what would it be hmm. it can be everything it could be electrical cars it could be um, solar panels on the roof whatever it could be a software thing like forms for example <laughs> <laughs> and now you had enough time to, to, to think about the, the, the oh, trend. I, I was listening to you so i wasn't thinking <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> multitasking um, another topic yeah boom, boom, boom. And also the fact that you say it could be anything that makes it so broad. <laughs> <laughs> you can say even more than um, one if you want. <laughs> What would I cancel? Modern IPA beer, maybe. It's not technological, but <laughs> it's something. Um, small, small suitcases uh, for carry-on luggage on uh, on airplanes. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Was it the the other way around when we you were younger? <laughs> well, when I was younger, uh, you wouldn't have carefully asked. You right? didn't have to pay extra for uh, for check in luggage, so everybody just had check in luggage and took something on board to pass the time. You know, have a drink, uh, have yeah. something to read, and that's it. Yeah. Then you have started to have to pay for uh, check in luggage, and now. Everybody's trying to cram everything into these yeah. smaller suitcases and bring them on bo- them on board. The problem I have with that, and the reason I think of this is because we had a small discussion in a private uh, Twitter group uh, 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 before this this weekend. <clears throat> uh, now everybody's taking these suitcases on board, and they have to be in the overhead compartments because mm-hmm. they are too big to fit under the chair in front of you. 
And then at some point, these overhead compartments are full. And then the uh, the stewardess, uh, the, 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 what do you call them in English? The stewardess. The stewardess, yeah. Whatever, yeah. yeah. Stewards okay. and stewardesses okay. and stewards. And uh, I think you have to be And they careful to come it. up to you and they will take out your reasonably sized rucksack that you took on board and tell you to put it at, at in the on the chair under the chair in front of yeah. you because they have the, they need the, the room for these <coughs> huge suitcases and then here i am the one with a sensible uh, uh size mm -hmm. uh, carry-on luggage without any leg room because i need to make space for these <coughs> Other people <laughs> <laughs> using. <laughs> we so had to reset the recording. We don't have the beeper. Button. <laughs> yeah, we don't have the beeper, but but we have the explicit sign on the podcast. Uh, okay, <laughs> so we can we can swear if you want. <laughs> so that that's that's a bit of a frustration for me. Yeah. So yeah, I would uh, I would cancel that. I mean, at some point they um, they start to put the big luggage pieces into the normal storage unit. Mm -hmm. In, in the in the airplane so they say you can check it in mm -hmm. for free <laughs> they yeah. say but um yeah I, I i usually know what what this problem is because i yeah. have big feet and big else yeah. and <laughs> so so yeah mm. all right uh, another question from the hypothetically part so you have to think again um what would you like to invent and create in the future or in the technology sector or something gee <clears throat> I really should have listened to this uh, podcast before because uh, then I would have been prepared. Definitely. Maybe I can <laughs> use one of those pets, pets here. Yes, you should. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, what would I invent? Hmm. Bigger overhead compartments and well, planes. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know what we talked about. Uh, flying skateboard like Marty McFly had. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be great. Yeah. So Moritz, one point for Moritz. Now, Eric, it's your turn. Yeah, that, that's not what I would uh, would choose because, yeah, I'm too old for that. <laughs> come on, Moritz is also old. So. Oh, come on. No bashing here. No, no program. Uh, <laughs> no program languages and no more. You know I do the code reviews at our company. All right, Eric, what is... Uh, <laughs> bigger overhead compartments might be a good mm, thing. That would be a good one, but yeah. More let's try room. to find something for myself, what I would, what I thought of myself. Um, it's, I really don't know. I mean, I can think of things, but those are the, 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 the corny st standard stuff like a, a time machine or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I, I really don't know. I mean, it's... Uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the world as it is. Well, there are some things I'm not happy with, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so maybe maybe we um, just head over to the next question. And if, if there's something you could just... Uh, if something pops up, then... Yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay, now we're going to in this uh, category in private. All right. Are you satisfied with your work-life balance right now? So as a self-employed, it's very, very uh, self-employed. It's very interesting to hear about that. Yes, I am uh, pretty happy about that. Uh, what I'm not happy with is the fact that the day only has 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Because there are so many things that I want to do, uh, work-related, but also privately, that I just don't have the time for. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think the balance is quite okay, even though I do have to watch it. Because as I said before, I tend to say yes to everything that uh, that sounds interesting. And that means that I spend quite a bit of time on work related work related stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, that's not always as always fair enough against uh, towards my wife. Yeah, right. I, I we we had some some answers to this question from from different guests that they were saying that's not uh, work life balance, it's work life blending, right? So we all do um, stuff in our work or daily business that is um, somehow our hobby, right? So it's not no. every time like work and private life. And um, so it's more like a blending. So, right, you, think, you do yeah. stuff you don't like very much, but there is stuff you're very interested in. So it's like more than a hobby, right? Exactly, exactly. I th I've never heard that term, the blending, but mm -hmm. yeah, blending, but not work-life blending. Uh, but I, yeah, I like it because indeed my work is not separated from from my life it's not 
two parts of Eric Van Roon. My work is very important for me. I love it and I like doing it. And it isn't something that I just drop when it's uh, five o'clock in the afternoon and then I start on my other life. For for the first moment, I thought you were talking about your wife, but yeah, you're working about your job, right? <laughs> <laughs> my, my what? My, my what? 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 Yeah, wife? that's the thing you do for the for the two hours left. On your day, <laughs> oh, right? Okay. I, apparently, I have a wife. Yeah, it's, <laughs> okay. It's the dangers of a curious mind, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Next category: consumption. Uh, how do you consume news and new knowledge? Um, for example, newsletter, Twitter, books, magazines, LinkedIn or something. Or maybe even podcasts when it's not Devs on Tape. <laughs> <laughs> Now, don't uh, be offended by the fact that I haven't listened to this podcast before because podcasts are just not my thing. Uh, there are good podcasts out there, but it's I just don't sit down and listen to a podcast for half an hour, an hour, and maybe in future when you have not enough leg room and you need to concentrate on something, <laughs> you can just put on your headphones and hear a uh, podcast, right? Yeah, I've, I've tried things like that. There were podcasts that I would really like to hear. And then whenever I had a long drive in the car, I think, you know what, I'll listen to it then. Mm -hmm. But even then, it's, it, it's just not something I like listening mm -hmm. to a podcast. Yeah. So that's, it's just not for me. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, uh, obviously I do need to uh, get some, uh, some information to me. And uh, that's, yeah, uh, websites, conferences, uh, books. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an old guy, as I said before. So I read books really? for, for, the young, for the young people out there. That's a, a pile of printouts that you right. just glue together mm -hmm. on one side then you can flip them over it's, okay it's, Moritz, it's an old concept Moritz, did you hear about that yes it's it's analog just for you guys it's analog world you, yeah. you need light for this right <laughs> well yeah natural light you know sun natural light yeah. that's possible so, so you can't read at night oh by the way we have electricity so you can have even artificial lights I thought uh, books are for raising your monitor to your eye level. Yeah, well, well, that is how I see books used at certain <laughs> workplaces, yes. <laughs> And that's, that's a great point to announce one great book from Steve Fo Stephen Feuerstein, right? It has a very great height for your monitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh no this is bleeding my soul yeah for, for, for the listeners Moritz is shaking I, I've, right? I've the seen pro the problem is that with every edition it gets thicker so you, you <laughs> every edition you would, uh, but it takes so long that you are raising I mean it, it's, right, it's growing, for the growing, growing software developer you know it's a, from, from both perspectives yeah. you know <laughs> what a concept great <laughs> so you no, but I, 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 I do like books because I do like to have them in my hand and I do like to Yeah, go through them and just skip from one chapter to another and back. <clears throat> But also just to start reading at page one and mm -hmm. end with the last page. And I mean, even uh, when this book is about forms or Java, it never gets outdated, right? <laughs> It's true. <laughs> another step, another step. I, should, I shouldn't do that, right? And <laughs> no. All right. Another question from the consumption part. Um Do you turn off your cell phone at night or are, are you always reachable and always... Um... No, my, my phone, uh, when I go to bed, uh, is put into a mode where only the phone uh, can disturb me. The rest is silenced. So, yeah, the phone, because um, I don't usually get f called in the middle of the night by people I don't know. Uh -huh. And the people I do know, if they call me in the middle of the night, then there is an emergency. Uh -huh. So then they should be able to reach me. All right. So um, at night you're turning off like every notification besides um, the the yeah call function, if it's called like that. Yeah. Um, but how do you deal, and that's the next question, how do you deal with the growing flood of information uh, via various channels, like push notifications from news channels or more and more notifications? How, you do, how do you deal with that? Badly. <laughs> it means you let everything go through and consume everything uh, yeah a lot of it yeah mm -hmm. uh, I spend a lot of time uh, looking at my at my phone screen mm -hmm. 
uh, I would have to say too much time. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, this leads to another question from the mm. private part. <laughs> this will be the last question. So yeah. would you show us your screen time uh, of your, uh, I think it's an Android phone, without yeah. blushing? Uh, well, I don't blush easily. Uh, I, I'm not ashamed of anything. Uh, I, I don't know how to show you uh, the screen time on my on my Android. Is there an option for that on the phone? You're asking the wrong, wrong guy because there's an iPad in front of me. I have a MacBook and an iPhone. I don't even know. And I, I, I was I, improvising. I knew there was something I, wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, I was improvising because this question is saying screen time on iPhone. But I saw that you have an Android phone. I mean, yeah. It's even um, a hurdle to watch uh, or to look at an Android yeah, phone for so long, right? I, I don't know about a function in Android to show you the screen time. It might be there. I don't know. It's, uh, but just take it from me. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, we, we can see that in the conference, right? When you're rock, walking around like a, it's called <laughs> Smombie, I think. A smartphone <laughs> okay. zombie. We'll see that in the next <clears throat> week at K-Scope, so... Well, you will see me. You will uh, see me looking at my phone a lot, uh, but that's not just uh, the stuff coming in. Uh, even during uh, presentations, you will see me uh, looking at my phone. Mm -hmm. It's not because I'm not interested in what the the person is talking about. Is I'm also using it to make notes. So okay, so maybe not talk to you at a conference. Just send a Twitter DM, right? That would be the best thing, yeah. <laughs> Great. So with the, with this <laughs> advice, um, you're now excused to leave just on the podcast. And uh, <laughs> thank you very much for attending. And um, I think it was a great episode. And thank you to, to Moritz and Philip. And I hope you have a great conference week next week. Thank and we will share some knowledge. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.